Thank you very much. Thank you, David. Um, Talo Falava. It's such a pleasure to be here at FOS4G Oceania. Um, yeah, my name is Yosefa. I'm a Samoan GIS developer, and I'm working now in Japan. So, and I work at GeoRepublic, and at GeoRepublic, we maintain um, the PostgreSQL and PostGIS extension PG routing. Um, we do more than just routing it at GeoRepublic. We work a lot with local cities and on projects that focus on building civic engagement and civic tech and the promotion of open data. But at the heart of what m much of what we do is, is uh, indeed routing. And this is obviously what brings me to New Zealand um, and Wellington. Is, I'm very happy to be here. Um, path and talk about pathfinding and, and fishes, kind of a strange combination maybe. Um, so fishing for routes, exploring the application of PG routing to model the navigation and movements of fishes in these highly heterogeneous uh, marine environments like, like mangroves. And this talk will basically be an introduction to, to PG routing, and I'll just explore the application of it to fishes. Um, <clears throat> and finding the shortest path of a fish, like way in the middle of the mangrove to some reef feature over here or something. Um, and so just to get a better idea of the type of environment these fishes are in, I have this picture up here. You have these really complex water waves, waterways and rivers um, through mangrove trees and seagrass beds and coral reefs and intertidal zones. And it's a really uh, interesting place to navigate uh, if you're a fish. Um, <laughs> so <clears throat> before I get started, I just wanted to share how I came to be here um, doing this talk and sort of asking this question. Um, the scenario, I guess, is kind of simple. I was a student doing some field ecology studies, and I needed to find the closest patch uh, of reef that a fish could swim to. Um, <clears throat> so here's the mangrove forest in the south coast of Upolu, Samoa. Sa'anapu is the village. And here's my friend Kieran, um, who's a marine biologist, and he's swimming and counting fish and doing all that stuff. Um, and we are looking at fish along transects, and we wanted to ask the question, how does proximity to nearby habitats, um, like seagrass beds and coral reefs, affect the community composition of fishes and mangroves? This is a very common type of question to ask in ecology. It's asked a lot in coral reefs, less so in mangroves, not in, even less so in the Indo-Pacific mangroves. Um, and it's a simple question, but it's actually quite difficult to find in a re reproducible and accurate way the distance between these two, this point and this kind of vague area. Um, because, you know, <clears throat> you know we, yeah, we want to get from, from here to there. And the simplest case, we're just concerned with the you know, shortest possible swimming path. Um, and of course, the shortest path would just be a straight line, but you know, obviously, we, we can't do this. Um, these fish, you know, we have to do something a little bit more like this. Um, these fishes can't fly over tropical coastal rainforests or maybe swim through these densely populated mangrove roots. Um, maybe strong currents influence their movements or areas that are too shallow. There's all these constraints that we need to think about. Um, and there's a whole field of movement, eco movement ecology that sort of deals with these questions, and that's not my specialty, and I'm not going to talk about that. But we can, we can use, oh dear, PG routing to, to solve this problem, and maybe also some image classification tools. Um, so here's just a brief overview of today's talk. Um, I'm going to introduce PG routing, talk about what it is, what it does, and how to do it. Um, I will also discuss how I used, obviously, PG routing to find the shortest path for fish I observed in mangrove forests in Samoa. Um, basically, this entailed creating a map and then generating a network topology that makes sense for fishes, and then using PG routing to find this path. Kind of straightforward. Um, OK, so what is PG routing? Um, has, is every, is everybody, has every, has, who's heard of PG routing? Uh, yes. OK, yeah, yeah. So, I, so this talk will be a combination of introducing it and then showing a no novel application. So um, PG routing is, uh, oh, that's the animation slide. Um, sorry. Uh, is a software library written in C++. It's open source. And it provides navigation and pathfinding in the database, um, allowing for developers and researchers to build networking routing applications and perform analyses on graphs. Um, it's an extension of the PostgreSQL relational database management system, and it heavily relies on PostGIS. Um, so 
what this basically what it is is it, it, it it's just, it's a tool that allows you to find the shortest path from some point A on a graph to another point B on a graph, and you can do this in PostgreSQL. You can do it geospatially. You, it's it's fast and fun, and you can do it with fish. Um, <laughs> Oh, another animation slide. Um, so you can install PG routing by downloading its binaries. Um, you can check out our website or GitHub repositories. And you can install it on Windows, Linux, uh, OS X, and you um, can run PG routing by creating uh, very simply the install Postgres, uh, install PostGIS, install PG routing, and then um, create your data PG routing database, and then add your extensions, and you're you're good to go. Um, and there are also plugins for tools like QGIS, so you can use OpenStreetMaps and others to sort of, however you want to visualize your routes. It's not something I um, have that much experience in, but you can, uh, <clears throat> yeah, you can make you know cool graphs and pictures and animations like uh, like this one. Does it work? Yeah. Okay. So the, um, <clears throat> this is. Uh, optimized garbage c collection uh, routing. So you have your you know, garbage truck starts at your depot, goes, and then you'll see where like, th the heavy routing really takes place, picking up all the, the garbage before then returning it to the depot and then uh, to the dump site and then returning back to the depot. Um, so it's quite, it can be quite fun, I think, to visualize these things. Uh, and so what does PG routing do? Well, PG routing does routing. Um, you can do your routing from a single source to a single destination, or for, from a single source to multiple destinations, or multiple sources to a single destination, and multiple destinations from a single source. So this one-to-one, one-to-many, many-to-one, many-to-many. And you can do all this with a, what it allows you to do this with a powerful and robust set of functions. And these, uh, these routing functions, and these functions are dedicated towards finding optimal paths along Network edges when faced with really maybe tough constraints, um, such as well minimizing distance between two or multiple points. That's the the obvious one. But um, you can also you know you, you can include their their algorithms and functions to do routing across all pairs. These functions that employ Floyd Marshall's or Johnson's algorithms, or there's bidirectional A star or bidirectional Dijkstra algorithms. All these there's a whole list, long list of really um, nice uh, functions for for finding optimal paths and solving these optimization questions. Um, and then you can do these you know, sort of complicated things like uh, routing with turn restrictions and traveling sales, solving the traveling salesman's problem. Um, or a problem that uh, several of my colleagues are now working on in, in Japan, where we're doing um, sort of an optimization problem for shared on-demand public transit s services. So we're working in a very small city north of Tokyo, 75,000 people. Um, it's funny, I think that that's small now because that's almost half of the population of Samoa. <laughs> um, but we're working with the local government to get the service off the ground at the end of the year. And citizens, you know, they, people, they can hi hail a van um, using their smartphone kiosk apps at stores or web apps, call an operator, and you know, it's a shared um, delivery service. Um, but also, PG routing doesn't have to necessarily be constrained to solving some geospatial problems. I mean, you can navigate across any graph. Um, for example, distances between branches on a phylogenetic tree of fishes um, in biology, or you know, these maximum flow problems and optimization in graph theory, which I don't really know much about. But the, there's, the list goes on and on and on, and there's, there's a lot of um, applications, including uh, fishes and mangroves, and the path, shortest path to the nearest reef. So, um, so let's restate what we want to accomplish. We want to find the shortest distance along a route that does not cross land or, mang or mangroves. Um, we can assume that these mangroves have really, really dense roots, and it's kind of hard for a fish to, to navigate through, mang through the mangrove forests. And we want to get to any point on the reef, and particularly the one that's closest. Um, and we're starting from a single point, but because we're a fish, we can then extend from that single point in multiple directions. So we have like a many-to-many -many problem where if, you know, we can start along any multiple edges and end up 
at any edge on a reef, and we want to find the closest one. So from here, there are basically three steps. Um, the first step is to create your network topology. I'll explain that in a moment. Um, and we want to do this in a way that makes sense for fishes. Um, and we then just choose our PG routing algorithm, and then we select the shortest path. It's quite simple. Um, but this is the hard part. The, and this actually kind of is outside of the scope, for the most part, of PG routing. And this requires a little bit of creative thinking. And you know, how do you get um, like a satellite image from Google Maps or like an aerial photograph or something to you know, something like this that the fishes can, or you can actually like apply your routing problem. Um, and you know, I, I, yeah, so you know, typically when, you, when you're solving these routing problems, you rely, you're working in cities and you're relying on open street maps and you're downloading your OSM roads data and then you, you know, you go from there, but we don't quite have that yet for fishes. I don't think they're, they're fish, fish mapping parties. I think yesterday they, were, you know, they had sheep in Faroe Islands at, uh, was a couple of years ago, but maybe, maybe that's a little too weird. I don't know. Um, but yeah, so it <clears throat> could be fun. Um, but yeah, so how do we get from this to, to, to this or, or any other sort of graph that you can um, work with? Well, I mean, there are several approaches. Um, yesterday, the Map Hillary talk I was listening to, I thought it would be quite cool to, to go out with, you know, and, and use Map Hillary, Map Hillary through the mangroves and, and do something like that, but um, haven't done that yet. Instead, I took the more conventional route with an aerial photograph taken by um, drone and uh, just made a um, classified map using, um, this was done with uh, Python's like um, scikit-learn and scikit-image uh, libraries and GDAL and you can do some you know, object-based image detection and features classification. And so then you have a classified map of mangroves, it's actually to the species level, it's Brugaria gymnoriza. Um, mangroves, water, water uh, reef features, and land. And um, that's a lot of area to work with. And if we look back to the original photograph of Karen, um, it's really only constrained to there. So it really makes sense to really narrow your bounding box. So when you're doing any sort of routing applications, there's no need to um, make your computer work more than it needs to. And um, the simplest approach to then building your, your, your network topology um, at least, or one approach, maybe the brute force naive approach, is just extract all vertices from your shapes, your polygons, and then connect all the lines. <laughs> and you can do that. Oh, oh wait a minute. I, uh, okay, yeah. Uh, you can do that, but there are a lot of edges to traverse. There's like 300 million or 30 million. I don't know. I mean, that's like not worth it for this small area of land. It's, it's better to, it's, you got to think of a, a better way. When I first did this, I, I did it that way. Um, it took, like, I had 2,000 fish and across multiple sites. It took a long time, about a month. <laughs> and what took long was all the Postgres, you know, um, joining tables and, and build, yeah, building the network topology, because that's kind of, that's just with Postgres and PostGIS. And so it's very computationally expensive and not very efficient. Um, but moving forward, there are a couple of, you know, there are a lot of different ideas that you can do, and what I am going to present today is just one of them. And what I did was I took those um, nodes, those vertices, and I created uh, Voronoi polygons, Voronoi lines. So these are just Voronoi lines. Uh, and this works really well in these waterways because you're, you're not, I don't know if you're guaranteed, but you have a, a node network that will go through uh, water. And so from there, um, but the problem is they're not connected to the to the to the to the point. So I created a bounding box of the original um, the, the observation point, which is the top left corner where Karen was swimming. Um, and then with that bounding box, you can say like, okay, all the lines that intersect this this um, not bounding box, this this buffer, this polygon. That's my starting point. Those are my starting lines, and my ending lines are all those lines that intersect these reef features. So I have my starting set and my ending set. Um, and I can then uh, look for all of the lines that intersect the features I don't want 
the fish to swim through. Um, so the land and, and mangrove features. And so that's our constraint. That's the cost. So we want to minimize distance uh, without intersecting any of those polygons. Um, so in, in PG routing, uh, once you've created that this 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 line, this this graph, um, there is there are some functions to help you build network topologies. This one, uh, I think it's called create network topology. Um, yeah, PGR create create topology. Um, so you know you need you need in your in your graph you need to specify and make explicit where the start of a edges and where the end of an edge is. And this, this make the create topology function does that for you. You just supply it a, um, an empty row, an empty column for source and target, or you can name it, whatever you want to name it, um, and, and specify your geometry, your, your ge geometry object. Um, and if you have very complex environments, it can take time. And then you alter your, then you want to you know, add your cost, which is just the length, the distance of each line. Um, I use the Dijkstra algorithm, and you can't, that will ignore anything that's not positive. So I just said anything that intersects land is negative one. Um, so that's, that's, and then, and then run your, run your call PG rounding to do its thing. You know, from your starting array to your ending array, you end up with a table of, um, is like sequences of, of lines, nodes, and then you get your shortest path. And because it's the Voronoi lines, it's kind of, it's right through the middle. <laughs> so, um, yeah. And uh, I, I guess I'm, that's, that's it. So I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you for that. I looked at that four or five years ago. And we were tagging fish around New Zealand. Oh, okay. And the issue there is we tag a fish on the east coast off East Cape and it's caught on off Australia. There's no way of knowing whether it went through Cook Strait or around the North Cape. Right. And the assumption that fish travel on the shortest path oh, yeah. tagging program shows that does not happen very often. Right, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I'd love to see this application and sort of find, find uses for doing more. But building the network where fish can go is a very difficult one. Oh yeah, no, I, and I, I think it would be a really cool, uh, interesting problem to look at, you know, because yeah, fish move kind of, I mean, who knows, yeah, I don't know how, I mean, it's a little bit, so they're kind of erratic and doing all sorts of crazy things. They don't follow an optimized Dijkstra <laughs> solution to the to reef, I mean. but. But the question that, I, that we were asking, though, is you know we, we wanted the, the we wanted a measure of distance, and this is at least a good reproducible approximation of like what's 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 a good like study area to like to to, to narrow our constraint on. When it comes to fish tagging tagging movements, the big advantage we have now versus 40 years ago when I started doing it was we can have satellite tags, so we actually know where some fish go and how they got there. Mm -hmm. What we used to have was start and finish with three years in between and no mm -hmm. idea where they went. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Thanks. Hi. Sorry, it's a vague question, probably topologically related. So um, are you using the edges from the Voronoi polygon for the routing? Yeah. Um, so since that, they are like the basically the edges of whatever it is, would it be better if you look at the same choice of the Voronoi polygons and then build a network out of the same choice. Yeah. Would that be better? I, I, I think there are certainly um, a lot of ways you can improve this. You know, you can do like a triangulated irregular network from these points as well and join this to the, to the polygon. Um, yeah, that, that, that would be a better idea. I just, for, for this presentation, um, Getting this is this is what uh, I did. This is this is the Varanoi line that the fish thinks about when they go. <laughs> <laughs> the salmon fish are freaking smart, man. <laughs> but good, good, good suggestion. Thank you. So, do you think in the future you can adapt maybe like external factors such as current, such as I mean maybe in a certain specific area of the mangrove, 
there is a specific fish that is being born compared to another one. So that variables can be adapted to this model or something? Yeah, the, the, you can. The easy way of doing this sort of thing is, um, I mean, you can, you can apply some sort of cost to a line. And I mean, like, um, you can make lines more expensive to traverse across. So when I was an undergrad, I studied a lot of predator-prey relation models. And then that would be really fun to like, you know, include some predator-prey dynamics in, in the fish. Because I'm, if I'm a fish, I'm going to avoid maybe some of the big trevellies that come into the mangroves. But yeah, so it's possible. Okay. So is it possible to add a temporal element to the cost? So or could the cost function be somehow dynamic? So as the fish go through, well, suddenly the situation is different. Is that possible to encode in PG routing? Uh, not, sh not sure, I think. Perhaps. I, I, um, you, can, you, can, you can incorporate like, uh, um, like sort of times and, sp and speed. Uh, but yeah, t dynamically, I, I would have to ask people who are more familiar. I'm a little bit new, uh, on the newer side. Sorry, good, good question. Those are great suggestions. Imagine, I'm gonna close it now, but <laughs> just imagine all, oh, how about this and how about that? And that's just applying for us really in general. So let us think. Yosefa, who will get another Nappy Socks. <laughs>